All right, welcome to the show. My name is Bart, and in today's episode, we're going to look at Blender and a powerful new tool that I just recently found out about. It's called Camera Track AR, and it's an app for an iPhone. It only works on the iPhone currently, but this is amazing in so many ways that I just can't wrap my head around it. So I need to show you exactly what I mean. So this is how the app looks. You can see that you can track uh, your uh, floor or, and also you can track, should be able to catch it. It works better if you use a uh, some, some kind of point of reference. Yeah, you can see here now it works. It captures the wall, so you can also add trackers to the wall, like so. And I can add also a tracker over here and over here. And it also detects uh, tables. So you can see that I also have a grid on the table. So if I go into this mode, I can hit record and just record my scene. And later I can see these trackers in my 3D program. Pretty cool. So you can see it records an MP4 file and all the scripts you need to import the files. So I'm gonna jump onto my computer and Right here, I have a sample file that I just, I kind of experimented with this, right? And basically this is a camera tracker for your uh, iPhone. And you can bring that tracking data into Blender or After Effects or whatever your compositing 3D tool is. And I did some uh, experiment. So first I, I rendered this really crappy uh, shot. It's just, uh, you know, it's kind of floating a little bit because the, the, the camera track was off. But the, the, the cool thing about this is that I started experimenting, experimenting even more and trying to add in uh, and basically get this right on, spot on. And the thing that I liked about this workflow is that I was able to render all this in one shot in Blender. I didn't, I didn't need to go through the whole compositing because I just did the whole compositing right inside Blender. So. There's no external uh, tool here. I didn't use After Effects or Premiere to, to, you know, to overlay all this. It's all done in Blender. But you can use Premiere, After Effects, whatever the tool to, to get this effect with this uh, nice tool, with this app. So I'm gonna show you uh, this, the, the scene setup of this. Basically, it's just this scene, right? That's it, nothing too fancy. I have downloaded this model from Sketchfab. It's called um, Real Time Bones Demo Phoenix Bird. You can get it from Sketchfab for free. It's an animation. You can just import it with the Sketchfab free plugin uh, that you can find in uh, the Blender. Blender. And the cool thing here is that I want to show you is this compositing tab. So this is my uh, s scene setup of how this works. So this this is just a clip of a movie clip. And you can see here, this is the clip. It's added here. And that goes into the image, that scales it, and goes into the alpha over. And this is the render rail, render layer. So if I just uh, render out a frame here, you see I get the frame of my whatever is going on on the frame in, in Blender. And then underneath that, I put I get my video, right? And the, the app itself, uh, basically gives you three files. It's a HFCS file, a Blender HitFilm importer, PIY, which you need to import as a plugin into Blender. I'm gonna show you uh, exactly. And the last thing you get is a clip. And this clip is already tracked, right? And this is the cool thing, this is the cool part, that having this clip already uh, aligned with the whole thing, uh, with the with the camera, this is what you get. You're basically able to 
uh, have your camera already replicate whatever your iPhone is doing in the real space. And you can, you know, plunk whatever scenes, 3D scenes you, you, you come up with and it'll all match up. And you don't need to do any motion tracking, which is another cool thing because the motion tracking is already done on the phone. And this way you can basically, you know, do, do amazing things, right? Um, I, I also added a shadow catcher here. You can see here that this is a shadow catcher and this is to be, uh, so I'm able to uh, um, see the shadows of my objects. Uh, one last step you need to do in order to blend your footage, your 3D footage with your scene is to use a HDRI. And I'm not gonna go into HDRIs now, because you can capture one yourself in the scene while you're filming with the camera. And that way, when you plunk 3D models into your scene, they will, they will exactly reflect light and work exactly how it should uh, be in 3D, right? So I'm gonna just quickly do a new file and show you the workflow. So I'm gonna delete everything in my scene, hit A and S. For your viewing pleasure, I'm going to turn on a screen key so you can see my shortcuts. So once you're uh, once you download the files and you plunk your um, your footage, you download your footage from your phone. The uh, the 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 plugin's name. Let's just go to installed. So you need to import this uh, PIY file that comes with each uh, recording. And once you've done that, just enable it. You can go to file import and this will appear. Hit film AR tracking data. So just hit that, navigate to your folder and just import that file. And it's as simple as that. If I jump into the camera, I create a new uh, plane, right? just to have some reference. You can see that my plane uh, is tracked uh, the same way, uh, the same exact uh, way the, the footage is shot, right? And I already have this and I can start uh, designing around this. I'm just gonna create a, a you know, classic cube, nothing too fancy. Just no snapping, all right. Uh, just a quick scene like this. So the next step you need to do in order to blend this with your footage is to get your actual footage into your scene. And you can do this a whole bunch of ways, uh, but I'm gonna show you the easiest that I've come up with and it kind of works, kind of. So go to the compositing area and just hit use nodes. And you get these two render nodes. It's called render layers and composite, right? And if I render out a scene, this is what you you you, you basically get, right? Uh, there's no light, there's nothing, you can't barely see anything, etc. So the first uh, step is to download the, um, add the footage, right? So I'm going to go to, go to uh, add input and then just select movie clip. And from the movie clip, hit open, navigate to your movie clip and just open clip. So you can see your clip here appears in this little node here, right? And to uh, in order for us to see anything, we need to add a so-called uh, viewer node. So I'm gonna hit Shift A and type in viewer. And just add it here. And whatever I connect to the viewer now, I, it will show up in this comp, uh, this, this, this composition uh, window, right? If I unplug it, it goes away. So if I use it with this one, I can have a look what's going on in the render, right? So yeah, this is pretty simple, works pretty pretty decent. So what I need to do is to uh, basically now combine these two, right? Because 
I've already have the camera tracking data, right? Because it, it, it imported it all, it did all the hard work on the phone and the app itself. And I have the footage, so I need to blend it in now. So how do you do that? Well, we'll hit shift A and there's a, there's a uh, node called alpha over, which basically just aligns, uh, puts one image on top of an, another. And it works, I think, from top down or from bottom up, we'll see. And to have a look how your composite works, uh, you just plug in one image, plug in the second image here, and then have a look at the image viewer, right? I'm gonna just, yeah, so I think I mixed them up. So I'm gonna plug this one in here and this one in here. Do a render. All right, sorry, I got a little bit mixed up here. Um, these nodes sometimes blow my mind. So yeah, movie clip image goes on on the top one. Just, just I don't know. It just that, that's the way it works. And this one goes on the bottom one, the rendered layers. And then these two go one to the viewer and one to the composite, so you can see our render. And if you render this out, F12, you will get this, which is a good start. Um, if you have a look at our scene and back in the layout, you can see here that there's little that there's this little tracker here and uh, the cube is kind of floating. So I'm going to just drop it just a little bit. So it's just right on spot. All right, with GZ. So I've got the cube going and it's on my tracker, right? I'm going to scale down with just and uh, this and kind of try to align it uh, with uh, my scene, right? So I'm just going to jump into compositing again, have a look at these notes, hit F12. And yeah, it's kind of, I need to maybe rotate this a little bit. And after, and I have to add another plane here, which will be our, um, so we'll have two shadow catchers, one on the bottom of the, of our object and one on the top and that way we'll be able to uh, blend this into the scene even better so uh, once we have this ready um, we need to oh yeah how do how to get this effect right I, I didn't mention the there's a very key feature and it's right it's actually right here I'm gonna point at it if you have a look here film right this little checkbox over there, that has to be transparent. If it's not, uh, then the scene will become, you know, like this. And if I render it out, uh, our background in Blender will block out our video. So in order for this uh, to work, you need to select this to transparent. And uh, let's quickly do some, uh, just some quick modeling. Uh, so I'm gonna go Shift D, duplicate this, R, uh, X, I mean Y, 90 degrees, G, X, move it to the back, G, Z, move it to the, a little bit to the top, so we have our, kind of our back plane, uh, you can see our shadow working here, we can uh, increase our shadow uh, cube size uh, with the resolution to get a much better resolution, uh, see how, 4000, Actually, no, no, let's, let's go down to 128. Yeah, uh, if you go down, it goes actually, uh, it, it looks better. Let's see if I go down to 64. Yeah, so uh, the bigger you go, the kind of the shadows will look more jagged. The smaller the cube size, the more pixels it has here. Uh, there's probably more options with the shadows. You can also do high fit depth and that will do that 
So if I render out my scene now, now whatever the frame is, now this is cool, right? You can see that this is already being tracked, uh, kind of. I mean, I just put this in, in the scene. I didn't even edit anything, but my camera from my iPhone is my virtual camera here, and I'm able to basically do this. So if I go into composite, you can see that my scene kind of doesn't align that well. And this is due to the fact that I'm only using one point of reference uh, of the free version of the app. If you uh, go into full, if you use the full version, you can add uh, four of these anchor points. And then, I mean three, I think, you can add two that will uh, define, let's say, a straight line on the on the floor, and you get one extra that you can uh, attach to a wall or whatever you know something else, and that way you'll have you you have you'll have a point of reference. So I'm, I'm just using one point of reference here. Um, so uh, let's have a look. How can we quickly fix this? So if I See if I move all of this G, um, G, X, just to the side over here like that. Jump into the camera view. Hit F12. Yeah, so it's kind of a little bit off. Uh, let's, let's have a look here into another scene. Something like this. It's actually not that bad, maybe, yeah. Um, anyway, let's try to do this and see how it you know, looks in the render. Maybe it will, be, it will look better than I think right now. So uh, uh, in order to do a shadow catcher, you have two options. You can either go the EV way, which is the faster render engine, or you can go the cycles way. Uh, I'm going to select motion blur just to have that. And let's jump into, um, it's called HDR Maker. I use this, uh, this is a paid plugin that's very useful and it allows me to quickly bring in a HDRI map and attach it to the scene so I get the same light. I can, I can control light basically with this plugin, which is very, but I'm going to uh, do a quick shadow catcher right now. So I'm just going to click on my plane then select shadow catcher and then click add to shadow catcher and that will uh, make this plane kind of black which is not what we exactly want but if we um, go through the settings here you can see that there's an adjust range and I can kind of key out so I only get the shadow here from the bottom here that I want in the cube. And I'm going to do the same here. Add shadow catcher and just adjust the range. Something like that. Keep it at very low values. I don't know why. I think there's yeah, there's a lot of Eevee has some options here that you can tweak uh, around going to shadow. But the thing is that we need to have a look before we actually uh, do all this. Is the sun rotation? So if I render out this now, see I'm getting a little bit of a um, uh, glitch from here. Let's have a look. Adjust the range. Just go down a little bit more. There we go. So if I move this cube now, it's kind of more like this. And yeah, I'll get rid of the light. I oh, actually no. Let's 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 no no. no. Let's get rid of the light.
and we're going to just add a kind of a HDRI that's similar to the uh, environment where the, the clip was taken. So I'm just going to add this abandoned uh, thing and this will affect how my uh, 3D model uh, looks and also uh, reflects light. Uh, and this way, okay, so just to sum up, I'm, I'm kind of losing my energy here. I need to pump up. So for this to, uh, let's have a look at how it looks. Okay, that looks um, a little bit better. Kind of lost the shadow though. Um, let's go to the just range. All right. And let's do a render. Yeah, so I don't like that. It's kind of too too harsh. And it should be more um, sharp. And EV is tricky with shadow catchers because you kind of have to fake it in a sense that it's uh, it's a kind of uh, less shadow, I would say. Um, Turn on the cube. No, no, that's not helping a lot, is it? Mm. And yeah, it's animating pretty well. Have a look. Have you? It's it's levitating in the scene. Let's do a little animation just to make this more even more uh, funny. I'm just gonna add a keyframe RZ and then just. So we got our rotation going and yeah, this is pretty much it. And once you're ready to render this whole scene, uh, you can, you know, you can mix any 3D models now with this, in this technique because uh, anything works here. I can add a, in a model that I download, put, put, put it on the scene and will uh, attach to my uh, scene, right? So I'm just going to do a quick render. Uh, of this video so so to summarize you'll be able to see to render out your video you need to go to this tab make sure that uh, uh, it's really good yeah let's do that And now once we have all this done, I'll just change the resolution. I mean, the resolution is fine. We'll keep it and FFMPG, call it uh, AR camera tracker MP4 encoding, make sure MP4 is set and Gonna go to uh, perpetually loveless. So I'm gonna pause the recording now, so my render goes up, and I'll see you in the last section of the video. So yeah, after about 20 minutes, what you get is this kind of render. Now this isn't a perfect AR composition, but it's pretty, it's pretty well done using just one point of reference, the tracker. Now I should have put the ball a little bit to the, uh, this, this way, that way it would be more, uh, it wouldn't be as much as, uh, I think it's a little bit floaty, but other than that, the, the movement up and down and, uh, you know, going into frame and keeping it uh, in position, this works really well. Now, the thing about this footage is that it's very uh, high frame rate. And if I would render out this in 24 frames per second in a more kind of cinematic uh, kind of preview, this would look a little bit much uh, more uh, realistic in the sense of cinematic quality. But other than that, I'm pretty impressed with the capabilities of this application and 
what you're able to do uh, just by using your phone and Blender now. And this way, uh, by the way, this is a great example of using Blender as a uh, and your iPhone as a virtual, you know, camera because you can plan out your shot just using your phone, then import the camera into Blender and just, you know, set up your scene. It doesn't have to be an AR scene as 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 it's here, but it can be if you want to. So you get all that in that in that one package, which is a really cool, um, you know, workflow. And if I think if you if you upgrade the app, you also get a um, After Effects uh, plugin where you can uh, also import the camera, so you can mix Blender and After Effects together to get even more. Uh, control and even more you know uh, you, you know After Effects is, is a great software by the way it's it's just I've used it so many years I've come back to it and then not used it and then used it again so it's you know it's it's like a love-hate relationship but Blender changed a lot uh, I was able to do, to do a lot of things right in Blender without using After Effects but I still think After Effects is a really powerful software suite uh, and it's worth learning definitely uh, if you want if you're considering VFX because it's widely used in the industry so anyway yeah this is it uh, the, I hope you like this video tutorial and uh, I'm kind of yeah it could it, this could have turned be out better but I'm wondering if I get the full version of the app because this was done on a free version, which you can get download now on the App Store. But if I use the full version, I will uh, I'll have three points of reference. I can add three trackers, and they will appear as anchor points here in Blender. And based, what you can do is you can plant the tracker on a wall, plant the tracker on uh, the a floor and plant the tracker on like a second wall and that way you're, you're basically a virtual camera flying around and uh, you can use it you know for compositing you can use it for uh, virtual camera uh, I want to do some experiments where I uh, want to do a kind of miniature uh, tabletop experience where um, physics from Blender interact on a table and then fall off and hit the ground and uh, try to do that in, in the next video series. Uh, I already have an example here uh, which I did recently which was the first uh, experiment. Yeah, I'm going to save this. And yeah, this, this turned out pretty cool too. Um, uh, you can import quickly animations from um, other um, software. I mean, uh, you know, Sketchfab or whatever, and just quickly prototype uh, your animations. And you know, it's, and it really worked uh, well. I was uh, because this was a low light test test, and the low light test uh, turned out really good. Uh, Obviously, the, 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 the AR kit, which is a uh, platform used uh, by uh, for, for tracking this motion data, works better when there's full f uh, sunlight. I mean, uh, shade, I mean, uh, the, the has to be in a pretty well lit condition, the scene, then it works the best. It tracks the, uh, it maps the area really fast. But even in a low light condition situation like this, it was able to um you know uh catch the plane and i was able to you know just fly a little character through uh the scene and and and, he, and it sticks in the scene which is really cool and have a look at it this is the scene so yeah uh it's very short because i was just you know rendering a few frames uh, i didn't want to you know uh wait for ages it does take a while to render even on a fairly fast computer and i'm using ev uh, i think i could speed up the process if i uh, used um not the mp4 file but rather a png sequence so one step you could 
take to make this a lot faster for Blender and for general use is to generate a PNG sequence and import that as the source rather than using the video file. It just uh, helps Blender to render things faster. So yeah, this is pretty much it. I hope you liked this video and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.